diseases much deadlier than AIDS. Cancer kills more than 530,000 Americans every year. One in three people will be diagnosed with cancer during a lifetime. Since 1950, overall cancer has increased by 44%, childhood cancer by 20%, breast cancer by 60%, and prostate cancer by 100%. In 1994, a subcommittee of the National Cancer Advisory Board announced that since President Nixon declared the war on cancer in 1971, the incidence of cancer has gone up by 18% and the death rate by 7%. We already know that an overwhelming number of cancers are caused by a diet high in animal products, tobacco, toxic waste, and pollution of the air and water. And yet we still insist on fighting cancer not only with surgery, but also with chemotherapy and radiation, which far from curing the patient, can cause the proliferation of cancerous cells through the suppression of the body's immune system. The fact remains that allopathic medicine has failed to produce the desperately needed cancer cures, despite having spent countless billions of our tax dollars infecting hundreds of millions of perfectly healthy animals with artificially induced cancerous tumors. The story with diabetes is equally bleak. On November 2, 1995, the National Institute of Diabetes and Digestive and Kidney Diseases reported that in less than 40 years, the number of Americans diagnosed with diabetes has tripled. People on the other side will often give you emotional arguments in favor of animal research. They will say, oh, if it weren't for animal research, we wouldn't have insulin. And what would happen to all the diabetics? But they don't give you the darker side of the insulin question. They don't tell people that according to physicians themselves today, the most eminent leaders in the field of diabetes, 90% of all diabetics who are on insulin should not be on insulin. They won't tell you of the evidence that insulin, when given to a diabetic over a period of years, can be responsible for the late complications of diabetes, diabetic retinopathy, blindness, and diabetic gangrene. They don't tell you the dangers of insulin. They don't tell you that just like with other drugs, penicillin, cortisone, insulin today is so widely misused that it's quite possible that more people have been killed by insulin over the years than have been saved. Birth defects have skyrocketed. According to the March of Dimes, one child in 12 is born with a birth defect in the U.S. every year. Other sources report even higher figures. The Association of Birth Defect Children estimates that every year more than 600,000 babies, one in seven, are born with some kind of a birth defect. Tragically, organizations such as the March of Dimes still fund biomedical research which involves interfering with the pregnancy of perfectly healthy animals for the alleged purpose of studying human birth defects. Without going into the discussion of what AIDS really is and what causes it, the fact remains that animal experimenters have never been able to infect a single non-human animal, whether it be a rat, a cat, a chimpanzee, or a baboon, with human AIDS. This in spite of massive efforts aimed at creating an animal model of human AIDS. The reason for this is that the immune system of non-human animals is drastically different from that of humans. AIDS is a human disease, and no amount of animal research will ever produce a vaccine or the desperately needed cure. Vaccination is without a doubt one of the most sacred areas of biomedical research. But in a breakthrough article entitled The Lethal Dangers of the Billion Dollar Vaccine Business, published in the December 1996 issue of Money Magazine, Dr. Ronald Desrosier, a professor at Harvard Medical School, confirms how vaccines produced with animal tissues can carry dire consequences for humanity. Dr. Desrosier states that, quote, the danger in using monkey tissue to produce human vaccines is that some viruses produced by monkeys may be transferred to humans in the vaccine with very bad health consequences, end quote. In the same article, Money Magazine states that there are as many as 59 health problems, including major immune and neurological disorders, that are suspected to be a result of vaccines such as DPT, measles, mumps, oral polio, and hepatitis B. 
Even the rampant growth of some forms of cancers in the 80s and 90s, such as cancer of the brain, bone, and tissue that surrounds the lung, is finally being linked to the polio vaccination of as many as 30 million Americans, who during the 50s and 60s received the injectable and the oral forms of the polio vaccines, all of which were contaminated with the SV40 monkey virus and were fully tested for safety in animals. A study published in October 1996 in the U.S. medical journal Cancer Research suggests that the reason some forms of cancers are on the rise in the general population is that the SV40 monkey virus is now being spread sexually and from mother to child in the womb throughout the world. In light of such disturbing evidence, the multi-billion dollar vaccine industry is now trying to suggest that the solution is to screen out animal viruses from vaccines. This is simply impossible. Dr. Desroisier of Harvard Medical School warns that scientists can test only for those viruses they know about, and that our knowledge is limited to perhaps 2% of existing monkey viruses. But in the near future, the medical establishment will be forced to admit much more. Some scientists have been maintaining that the polio vaccine, which for years has been heralded by the vivisectionist industry as one of the biggest triumphs of animal experimentation, did not eradicate the polio epidemic of the 50s at all. It has been suggested that what was called poliomyelitis back then is now being called muscular dystrophy, a label which conveniently groups some 40 different types of neuromuscular diseases. Pharmaceutical drugs found safe for human consumption and approved by the FDA following rigorous animal tests often cause massive damages and even death. In thousands of cases, these drugs end up being taken off the shelves when the serious damages caused by their side effects can no longer be ignored. Each year, 10 million older Americans suffer adverse drug reactions. This is just what's reported. One can only imagine how many adverse reactions to pharmaceutical drugs go unreported. The obvious question is this. If animal testing is a valid methodology for assessing human reactions to drugs, then why is it that so many serious side effects remain unknown until human beings, the real guinea pigs, are exposed to the drugs? The fact is that animals react differently to drugs, not only from humans, but also from each other. Aspirin kills cats, and penicillin kills guinea pigs. Yet the same guinea pigs can safely eat strychnine, one of the deadliest poisons for humans, but not for monkeys. Sheep can swallow enormous quantities of arsenic, once the murderer's favorite poison. PCP, or angel dust, which is notorious for causing bizarre and violent behavior in humans, causes the exact opposite effect in some animals. It is used as an animal tranquilizer. There are enough such instances to fill a book. This massive catalog of almost 1,000 pages, which has been compiled by the United Nations and the World Health Organization, is only one example of a consolidated list of animal-tested products, including pharmaceutical drugs, vaccines, sera, and agricultural and industrial chemicals, whose consumption and or sale have been banned, withdrawn, severely restricted, and or not approved by governments throughout the world. Another example of a book that routinely lists the differences between the reaction of laboratory animals and humans to various drugs is the physician's desk reference, known as the PDR. Next time you're in your doctor's office, take a look at the PDR and see for yourself. Why then does the pharmaceutical industry rely on animal testing? The answer is simple. If a truly reliable test were to be used before marketing a drug, it would immediately become clear that a great percentage of the drugs developed are either worthless, harmful, or even fatal to human beings. This, of course, would spell disaster for the pharmaceutical empire. These are a few examples of diseases that remain uncured despite decades of research on animals at a cost of countless billions of dollars. Cardiovascular diseases, cancer, diabetes, AIDS, Alzheimer's disease, birth defects, muscular dystrophy, multiple sclerosis, cystic fibrosis, arthritis, cerebral palsy, sickle cell disease, lupus, and all sorts of mental disorders. In spite of the total failure of animal research, many people still ask, if we don't do animal experimentation, what should we do instead? This is like insisting on opening a locked door with the wrong key. You will never open it, no matter how hard you try, unless you throw away the wrong key and get the right one. For real medicine to work, animal research must be abolished and medical research must be based on scientific methods that are directly relevant to human health.
Technological advances that can help medicine in its search for real cures for human diseases include mathematical and computer models, in vitro human cell, tissue and organ cultures, and non-invasive imaging techniques, as well as autopsies and epidemiological studies of human populations. But there is no question that computers and test tubes cannot provide us with all the answers. Only the study of the whole living system can provide the fundamental answers medicine has been seeking for centuries. Clearly, in the field of human medicine, these answers can only come from clinical research or the observation and treatment of human beings suffering from spontaneous human diseases. If you are sick, you don't send your spouse to the doctor trying to find out what's ailing you. And certainly, you wouldn't think of taking your dog, Fido, to the veterinarian in order to find a solution to your health problem. Whatever knowledge we possess today about human diseases and their treatment has come from human clinical research and not from experimental research on animals. Animal research is counterfeit science. Much like counterfeit money, which cannot bring wealth, a counterfeit science cannot bring health. The choice is not between rats and babies. The choice is between real science and counterfeit science. It is time to bury the decaying remains of a medicine based on the medieval ritual of animal experimentation. It is time to usher in true medicine, a medicine based on prevention, clinical research, and above all, logic and common sense. It is time to abolish animal experimentation forever.